Hi, I'm Taylor. I'm Madison. Logan. We're the we came true. <laughs> um, we are from Hartsville, Alabama, small town North Alabama, mm -hmm. about an hour and a half away from here. And we're siblings, obviously. I'm the oldest, middle. middle. And the youngest. And um, we grew up, our dad's a pastor, and so we kind of were raised just singing all of our life. The earliest that I remember getting a start at this whole music thing, I was probably around four, and um, I learned a song on the piano. And I just was like, I need to remember these chords. But paper didn't cross my mind. So I found a screwdriver and I just scratched it into the wood on the piano. So F, C, and G, and an A were like forever written on our family's piano. So that's kind of like, you know, early. Shows our commitment. To right. To <laughs> you know, we, we lived in a small house. So we all three shared one bedroom until 10, 11, 10, 9. And so I, that kind of set the stage for the rest of our lives because we live together in college and we live together now. So in college, we, we'd always sang together, but just sort of as a party trick. We never did it professionally. But someone was like, you guys should do this video contest. And it was a contest open for Dave Barnes and Andrew Ripp. And so it was the day before the competition, the deadline was. And so we were like, let's give it a try. And we went through sessions of votings and we actually won. And so that's kind of when it started, because after we won the competition, they're like, all right, you get to sing original songs, but no, only one cover. And we're like, well, we have written one song, so... Sort of. Yeah. And it was... It was two days before we actually had to perform. They gave us 48 hours, so that's when we sat down together and wrote the song Stay On Board, which is the title track for our album coming out October 28th. And how we got to Nashville, um, we both had jobs. We still, even after we won the competition, we're not sure that we would still get to do music. We wanted to, but you got to pay the rent and you got to make money. So we started working jobs. Logan was still in college, and our grandfather, Mike O'Rear, after we all got our degrees, basically was like, do you guys want to do this? And we just, with reckless abandon, <laughs> we just went for it. And um, we're doing music full-time, and so that's where we are right now, yeah. and it's just been so yeah. great to get to be in Nashville. A lot of people don't get to come up here, you know. And Well, I feel safe speaking for the, all three of us in saying that. It was something that I feel like maybe we felt like we were made to do, like we were born to, to do music and we wanted to, but we were afraid a little bit. You, you never know. You can come up here and, and get lost in the shuffle or you never get a chance to really chase that dream. And so to have that presented to us, we jumped on it as quickly as we could. When I first moved to Nashville, I was working a marketing job. Taylor had a, another job, and for the first time in our lives, Logan was five hours away. We'd always been so close. So for an entire year while Logan was finishing up school, we would like go rent a hotel room, and Logan would go cut his vocals somewhere else. And then whenever I had an off day, I would go cut my vocals. So it was really, it wasn't like a woodshed experience where you're just doing it. It was a year of learning, writing songs, and recording. Mm -hmm. And so... Finally, after a year of doing that, we had recorded 32 songs, and so it was immediately like, all right, pick your favorites. So it, it was a really a long process. We didn't even know we were going to release the album. And we were really thankful to um, Ed Hill and Billy Lawson. We call them Uncle Ed and Uncle Billy. They're heavy hitters in the songwriting industry, and um, it was just cool for them to like take us by the hand, and they were never judgmental. They were never. We had a long way to go when <laughs> yeah. we first started writing songs, so they just walked us through the process. And like, you know, we're still not even great songwriters, but at least like we don't get offended anymore <laughs> if they don't pick our line. It's just like we kind of learned how to work together, and we all write on behalf of each other. So we're, one person's not going to write a song that the other two would not agree with. So it's just been great. And as far as being in the studio, we, I feel like we had done some recording, maybe some on our own. But for me, it was a very humbling experience. You think like, yeah, I'm gonna get in the studio and really, you know, work my craft and be an artist. And it was kind of just like, when you hear your isolated recorded voice played back to you, it's kind of like gut check time. You, know, you think that you can do this, and um, but then you know to get to hear some. We were at Wishbone Studios in Muscle Shoals. A lot of history there, and. Um, and they really took us in and allowed us to be part of that. Mm -hmm. and, um, and to get to watch some, you know, studio musicians, some of the best in the world, play the songs that we had written, it was kind of mind-blowing. It was mm -hmm. just a bizarre feeling to say, you know, no longer are we just writing these songs and playing sometimes, but this is it. We're 
we're making this a career, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I got to write Be Yourself With Me again with Billy Lawson and Ed Hill, and um, they had just watched a tribute to the Beatles the night before on TV, and so when they came in, normally they just write, you know, typical country songs, but they were feeling emotional today. When they came in the room, it was like, all right, they were like, we need to write about something that means something, so I was like, okay, what do we want to do? But, you know, we say all the time, we came to Nashville, mm -hmm. and um, almost intimidated, like, we're we're pretty confident people and but man when I got here my world was rock because I just didn't know anybody mm -hmm. we're starting over and I was trying to be friendly but everybody's got their own friend groups yeah. everybody's doing country it, music it feels like everyone kind of has their guard up you what you'll go and you'll meet someone everyone's reading each other their resume and I'm like y'all I just watch Netflix like you, you feel <laughs> like honestly I was just longing for people I could be myself with, so. Yeah, so that's, and we kind of say that to each other now, like, be yourself, because that's the only thing that we have is, like, you got to hold on to who you are, mm -hmm. and so if we can say that message to everyone, if everybody will just be their self, yeah. and, then we're going to be okay, so that's kind of where the song came from. And then what? We, we put together the, you know, the album, we bring it into Aristo Media, and, and we play it, and as soon as that song came on, it was kind of like, no. No bones about it, that's going to be the single, that's the one. And so we listened to the rest of them, but there was just something about the way that this one was put together that it grabbed us. Through and through, no matter what the song says or represents on its own, as a collection and, and even as a band, I feel like we want to, you know, empower people and we also want people to feel valued. Because that's sort of push all the words aside and everything else. And, you know, whether we want to be role models or whatever, the, the thing that I want the most from this music career is to get to stand in front of a group of people and to make them feel loved and to make them feel mm -hmm. important. Because the rest of the world is sort of out trying to fight to get to the top and belittling people along the way. And we want to do the opposite. There's a song in our album called Beautiful Life, and one of the one of the lyrics is, you are more. And that's something that we've been talking about when we get on stage, is that you are more, no matter what you've been told or where you think you can go in life, you're more than that. And um, I feel like what we try to do as a group has very little to do with singing and playing. I feel like sure. most of the impact that we make is afterwards when we get to talk to people and you know want to hear about their kids and their baseball yeah. team, just spending time... Getting to know people, I feel like that's where most of the work is done. Yeah. What we love to do, anyways. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Speaking <laughs> of trying to make people feel valued, we sometimes do not do that for I one do. another. I God. think that's kind of people ask us, and I mean, I hate to air our own dirty laundry, but yeah. people ask yeah. us if do you fight, do you argue, and um, I feel like the majority of the the disagreements sort of stem from we all value each other's opinions of each other so highly. So if I feel like I'm letting them down or they think that I'm not doing, I'm not singing right or whatever, yeah. then I immediately get defensive and I get sort of like, why would you think I'm not good? And they're just like, I we believe in you. Like, yeah. Just relax. So pros are is that you're never in this by yourself. I feel like I would just be a basket case if I didn't have Absolutely. people that... Your sure. friends with yeah. you, I couldn't imagine just the pressure, especially the yeah. insecurities if you don't feel like you're cool. So I think the That's sleepier funny. we get, the more fussy we get we're with each other. I'm like, Absolutely. like maybe, oh. yeah. a con <laughs> would be that we were in the van with each other last week for like 23 hours total. So like your <laughs> bandmates are your siblings. Yes. And like when you need a break from them, you don't. It's so impossible you, but, to leave work at work. But, because we go home But, the, you know, pro about that is that you're forced to work it out. So your fights only yeah. last like a minute tops. We're married you to each on. other. That's literally <laughs> how it feels. Yeah. But I'd say yeah. the pros far outweigh yes. the cons for oh, me. Oh, definitely. Think, because you see so many people. I, there's just, we already have so much skin in the game. We're already so invested in each other as individuals. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to music, I think that we can look past and say, like, I would rather our family work. Yeah. Than our musical career work, right. and then we can sort of 
prioritize like that. Yeah, so. sure. And we goof off all the time, so like that makes it better when you're not just you don't take yourself so seriously. Then that is true. Yeah. If there's any point where you're like trying to be too cool, you got two people that are just gonna put yep. you back <laughs> right in your place. In place. <laughs> Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Um, for those of you that haven't known, and maybe it'll be in the byline or whatever, but um, we are the Canes Trio across the board on all our social media. Um, our album will be out on October 28th. It's available for pre-sale now on iTunes and Google Play. Um, so we would love to have that support, but thank you again just for watching and supporting us like this. Thank you. Thanks.